Hello folks, tonight I'm going after the Tulip Nebula, and I've made a little change. I'm, I've jacked up my HA to 4 minutes now instead of 3 minutes. I actually haven't seen any low-flying planes in a while, so I don't really have an excuse to take shorter exposures, and uh, if it works out, I'll probably go even longer, for HA at least. I, I can't do that for broadband, but narrowband, yeah, I can get away with that. Um, my mean readout right now is 871, and it's been going up and down um, tonight, which means there's a lot of haze out there. It, it should steadily decrease as the night goes on, but that's not the case. And um, let's take a look at one raw image. Well, there's a tulip right there. So that's looking pretty good for one raw image. I'm going to collect a lot of data. Um, we've been having a lot of clear nights lately, so I'm really knocking down items. I've already finished the Eagle Nebula, finished Pickering's Triangle. Now I'm doing this one. I've got a lot of data so far on the Bubble and the Omega Nebula, so um, I'm going to take advantage as long as these clear nights keep coming. We'll see how long this lasts. And I'm almost afraid to see my guiding, but uh, it's kind of been kind of erratic the past few nights, but let's take a look. 0.88. Uh, the way it was performing last night, um, I'll settle for 0.88. It was actually above 1.0, so that's not too bad. I'll, I'll settle for that. And uh, uh, that's all I got to share for now, so I will see you later. Hey, I am back again looking at PhD2, and my guiding looks like it's finally performing the way I thought it would. Uh, and I'll settle for the 0.7 range. That's pretty good for me lately. Let's see, 0 0.73, 0 0.72, good. Keep going down, I like it. All right, well, I'll be back. Okay, I am done collecting data on the Tulip Nebula. I finished somewhere over nine hours on HA and somewhere over seven hours on oxygen. I was going to try the Hubble palette with sulfur, but... You know, this is not looking strong at all. And let me show you. I think I'm just going to stop with these two filters and go for an HOO image, HA in red and oxygen in green and blue. Let me show you what I've got so far for HA. That was over nine hours of HA. And this is pretty weak. This is over seven hours of oxygen. And this is after... I tried to pump it up with curves to improve this nebulosity here. I mean, that's all there was for seven hours. And, um, I mean, it was even, you should have seen it before I tried to pump it up with curves. It was even worse. But I wanted to show you something. I keep talking about that SHO AIP script to combine the data. But I want to show you that and really how you can do the same thing in pixel math because I think pixel math is really running behind the scenes when you're running the SHO AIP script. So let me show you that really quick here. So let's open up the SHO AIP script. And this is not actually even in the new version of PixInsight. But um, if you go back and look at the comments in my monkey head video, you'll see people describing how to get it back into the new version. But this script is really written for the, written for the Hubble palette. And like I mentioned before, you can treat this SHO really as RGB. So we want to put uh, uh, HA in red, oxygen in green, and oxygen in blue. So RGB, HA, oxygen, and oxygen. And I've seen other people do this before where they divide green into 20% HA as it says sulfur there, but really, if you look up here, it's it's HA, and then 80% um, oxygen. And let's run this. I, I don't know if it's going to take a long time if I can stay here or come back later. Oh, okay, good, it finished. So that's, that's what the combine looked like. But now let me show you how to do the same thing in pixel map. And let's uncheck this. Now you have to actually call 
um, this is R RGB, and you have to call it by the exact same name. It's actually case sensitive. It, it blew up when I called it HA like that. I got to put a lowercase a because that's how I have it up here. And then green, we're going to put, let's see, 20% HA plus 80% oxygen. Where is that? 0.8. And we'll put oxygen in 100% in blue. And we'll say create new image. We'll choose RGB and let's execute this. All right, let's compare what we got with Pixel Math and what we got with that script. And to my eyes, they are exactly the same thing. So if, if you don't have that script loaded, don't fret. You can just do whatever you want in Pixel Math. The only thing is that I haven't figured out is how to add a luminance layer with Pixel Math because that script um, does have a way to create a nice luminance mask. But maybe if somebody has the answer to that, I'd like to know if you want to leave a comment. Um, let me go back in here. Now, if you want to create a luminance layer, watch what you can do here. Um, you can put HA there and oxygen here and you give that a hundred percent and you can make this eighty percent now here's the black box because um, the eighty the hundred percent and the eighty percent that's easy enough to, to redo in pixel math but I don't know what's going on behind the scenes with screen I don't know what formula that is so I can't put it into pixel math to get the exact same thing <coughs> So that's a luminance layer right there. And so, and then that's what you could also um, throw into the combine. And like I showed in the monkey head video, like I always refer to that one because that's where I lay it all out. I don't know how to create this in pixel math. I, I can come close, but not exactly that because like I said, that screen parameter, I don't know what that's doing. So I, if anyone knows how to create a nice luminance layer, and Pixel Math, let me know. I'd like to know. It doesn't have to be exactly this. Any, any way to do it would be interesting for me. Okay. Okay, that's all I've got to share for that. So let, let's get rid of this. And um, okay, so this is what my combine looks like. I, um, you know, I go so fast. I, I, I think I ran an ABE on this. I might have just run an SCNR. Or maybe I did both. I should have saved all my steps. I wasn't expecting to finish it. It was more like a, a practice run to see how it was going to shape up. And I ended up keeping it. So that that's what that... A lot of people feel, you know, when it's non-linear, uh, um, automatic background extraction is too destructive. But I liked it. didn't matter to me. You know, if you like the result... Um, or I could have run SCNR or use curves to reduce the green. Did SCNR do anything here after I ran ABE? I don't know. Not really. Uh, but um, I took some liberties now with the colors. That's my final result on the right here. So what do you think? I tried to sharpen it a little bit in Photoshop. I denoised it a little bit in um, PixInsight. What do you think? This is about, let's see, 16 or 17 hours of data. And I, I don't know how much more I was really going to have to collect to make it look stronger. Make it look. Sh I I didn't try to sharpen it too much. I I didn't even run deconvolution. Like I said, I kind of raced through this one. I shouldn't do that. Um, but you know what? I want to move on to something I haven't done before. So uh, this is all I got for now, folks. I'm I'm sticking with it, and I've already made up my screen background. So there you go.
that's all I got, folks. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.